support. And we are going to go live on Facebook. All right. Wait till we load up on Facebook. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. Am, good morning, Jonathan. So I am Amy Loudermilk. I am the programs manager for Arts Build. Um, I'm joined by my uh, partner in crime, Melissa Aston, who is our manager of grants and community engagement. We welcome everybody to our Friday community Zoom um, for the month of August. Uh, We've got some special guests today, Robin Stringfellow with WTCI, uh, Andrea Zopo with uh, Follow Ladybug, and Miss Ann Treadwell of the Jewish Federation of Greater Chattanooga. So we'll get started here in just a second, but um, just a few announcements uh, coming up from Arts Build. We do have a shared services uh, workshop coming up in person. It's going to be the last day of this month, August 31st, in person at Arts Build. So this will not be, it will not be recorded um, or Zoomed. So make sure that you can join us in person. Um, we will, I'll send out that information here uh, after our Zoom today. Uh, as well as the recording of this Zoom, because I know we've got some teacher friends out there who have school schedules that don't allow them to do community Zooms like this, so they can join us after the fact. Um, Melissa, I think you've got uh, some announcements before we get started about some grants and some money opportunity. Yeah, there are a couple opportunities coming up. Our racial equity grant for individual artists, the application is currently open. And what that means is um, it's a $10,000 grant for artists who identify as AAPI and or Native American. I'll put my email in the chat so that you can email me about it or visit our website under grant making. And I'll put our, um, our website address as well. The other thing I have, if you're ever um, curious about the review process at Arts Build for our grants and want to be a part of that review process, we welcome community members um, to be on grant panels. Um, you all are who make the decisions for our grants, and we always are adding to our roster. And so just shoot me an email if you're interested in knowing more. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. All right, so to get things kicked off, uh, we've got three great ladies who Arts Build works with. And uh, and if you ever wanna be on one of these community Zooms to tell the community about projects you're working on, definitely come meet with us at Arts Build. But I'd like to get things started with the new manager of education, Robin Stringfellow at WTCI. And uh, that's not your complete title, but you, you can tell us a little bit more. So talk to us about this new position, Robin. Awesome, good morning, everyone. I see so many friendly faces and friends here. Um, thanks for being here. Yes, I am a 15 year educator. I'm mostly a social studies and foreign language educator. And I have joined WTCI to help manage the educational content and services. So what we're kind of working on is um, community outreach, and are creating some original content. And I see some of the people that we're creating original content with um, here right now. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna start with just offering really quickly because I don't, you know, I wasn't totally sure. Amy, can I share my screen? I wasn't totally sure um, if everybody, you know, what everyone's capacity is for education, but I just put together this guide and Amy can, and can, can everyone see this? Can I have a thumbs up that we can see it? Awesome. Um, so this guide is really just put together to help anyone who's involved in arts education um, just use PBS resources um, for what they are. And you can use them even as a, as a parent or as a caretaker, as an auntie or a grandparent, whatever you've got. So I just highlighted here, everything here is hyperlinked. So you can click right here on this image and it will take you 
to PBS Learning Media, which is the most magnificent thing on the planet. PBS has aggregated a ton of resources for educators and caregivers surrounding the things that we offer. So if you look at Pink Alicious, this is my son who's a kindergartner's favorite show. She does a lot of problem solving and um, artistic expression and a lot of creativity. There are lesson plans in here ready to go that you could use at home um, or with any students. And I put here just so that you would know the ages and what each one of these PBS national programs has to offer. Let's go Luna is my, my preferred show because it's a social studies show. Um, it pro promotes intercultural understanding and there's a lot of art in there as well. If you're working with students um, and you want to introduce art from Egypt or art from the Middle East or art from China, this is the kind of show where you could launch into that um, while educating. Scribbles and in Ink is another show that's very popular um, that has interactive episodes that teaches students basic drawing skills. And each of those also comes up by hyperlinked here again. Hopefully this is easy for everyone later to use the PDF. Um, you can come here and Scribbles and Ink has a lot of principal activities to teach different things that you might be working on um, in your workshops or um, your outreach that you do with students. So that's a really helpful way. In the bottom here, I've highlighted our show that we are creating called Raise Your Hand. We've been creating this show already with Angie Dittmar. I see Angela there um, from UTC and the Arts-Based Collaborative. Um, and we have that show, let's see here, I will show you. Yeah, we do this show in collaboration um, with the partners that I stated, and we would love anybody here who would like to come and make an episode, please contact us. If you would love to come and make an episode of Raise Your Hand in our studio, the um, Educate studio that we have um, was painted by um, Mr. Cryer himself, and it's beautiful. And come in if you want to teach art, um, any kind of art skills, any kind of performance skills, anything like that. We would love to make an episode with you. So this is just a plug for the show that we make that we're very proud of um, and contact us. And then on um, the next page, these are a lot of aggregated resources that PBS also offers um, for older students, perhaps. So the first page is kind of for younger kids. And the second page, I tried to be more intentional about aggregating things that you could use with middle school audience, with a high school audience, and even with an adult audience if you really needed to. So Art Still is a really cool show here. Let me see. Um, I'm not going to go too into detail because you all can discover these yourself, but there are a lot of beautiful things in here, elements of dance, and they're just short clips that might provide you a hook um, to working into a workshop or, or something with, um, with students. Austin City Limits and Great Performances are amazing offerings that PBS Learning Media has also chopped up into digestible um, segments and then can be used in educational spheres. So um, I love Rosalia, which is um, a Latina artist that I just, I love her so much. And they did some lessons here. If you go to Austin City Limits, they've taken some clips from her performances and you can use it to teach Spanish. You can use it to teach um, singing. There are a lot of, um, it, it includes terms here. So you can teach a lot of things that um, you might be working on with your students if you're a music teacher, things like chord choreography, things like that. So PBS has really done a great job nationally of, of aggregating the stuff that we have for students. All of these arts toolkits are also available to you. These are made by um, KET, which is the PBS station in Eastern Kentucky, I think Lexington. And they have also a lot of toolkits for artists um, and art educators that will help you. And you can click through here and see they've got them, um, you know, sort of organized by what you're looking for. And that is super duper helpful. They're a partner station of ours. And the last things I'll share is just that PBS Learning Media also works with outside organizations like the National Gallery of Art. Um, the Smithsonian, things like that, where we've got these little mini lessons that are embedded in here. It will tell you what grade they're for um, and teaching the elements of art, line, color, shape, things like that. Um, and then the last two things I will share with you, and art school is very similar. KQED has something very similar, which is, um, you know, just art basics that you might be teaching to people. And some of these are really neat. This episode, for example, here from sketchbook to runway, it's really cool. They're highlighting local high, high school students that are engaged in the arts in different regions. Um, and that's really a, a neat um, tool. The news hour classroom, this one is really neat because it allows you to work with your students or other educators, teachers um, through contemporary issues through um, you know, media, things that are happening right now. So art is a response to racial injustice. For example, if you wanted to kind of integrate 
um, the news or current events with art, then this would be a great place to look for that. And then last, the PBS has an amazing teacher's blog, and that's for teachers of all kinds, even um, you know, adult educators or um, anyone really can go here and find a lot of tips for using um, resources. Um, hashtag PBS for the arts. PBS loves the arts. We support it in every way. And there's just one last thing I will plug, um, and that's because Kate Warren is here. And I will tell you that we are creating um, a show with Art 120 Humanities Tennessee and with help from Doris Duke. Um, and we are really excited about unveiling this program that highlights local artists around Chattanooga that come from different cultures who are sustaining their cultural art form here. And we're using that to explore middle school social studies and um, traditionally low performing standards. So students in middle school do not perform well on, um, you know, for example, the unit that's about India and the Indus River Valley. So our first episode conquers the Indus River Valley and we use um, Kate's beautiful art truck um, to introduce students to the culture of Pakistan and the history of ancient Pakistan. So just a plug for our show, keep that in mind, it's coming out and we're really super excited about it. And I'm from Texas, so I talk fast and um, a lot. So I hope that I didn't overwhelm anyone in the crowd. And if you have any questions now, I would love to um, answer them. Or if there's things I didn't touch on, again, if you want a guide like this, if you create um, workshops or you do community engagement and you want us to create a guide like this for you that might aggregate resources, um, I would be happy to do that. That's the kind of thing I enjoy. So please reach out on the side if that's something you're interested in. Or if I didn't touch on something, I can um, answer questions now. Woo! <laughs> Thanks, Robin. I did put uh, the link to uh, the Google Drive uh, where this document is housed. So if you go in the chat, you can uh, grab that and then I'll email that out to everybody as well uh, later on today. Thank you, Amy. And again, if you work with educators, please share this with them. This is a volume of resources, parents, um, and they, they just may not know it's there and everything's free. So please share. And I think we've got a question from Corey. Corey, yeah. you got your hand raised so you can unmute yourself. Hello, how are you doing? Good morning. Hi, good morning. morning. That was amazing. Love it. Um, Want to know, is there any way for um, high school students to get credit, maybe high school credit, for taking any of these classes or um, engaging with any of these classes? Or would that just be through like whatever course they were taking that was using any of these resources wait did that make sense yes i think i think i got <laughs> your um your question i would say that most of what i have here would be meant for the teachers of those courses to assist okay. them um but as far okay. as you know are there opportunities for students to explore courses in the community that would count for high school credit i would kick that question to amy <laughs> <laughs> So re repeat the question. I was reading the message in the chat. Sorry. <laughs> Amy, you're supposed to be multitasking over there. <laughs> <laughs> so my question was, um, well, Robin kind of rephrased my question for me to make it make sense. Are there, <laughs> are there classes that anyone knows of in the community that a high school, really, my daughter, um, that a high school student could get credit for um, that, you know, maybe a teacher that utilizes these uh, resources that she would be able to take classes in the community to get high school credit. Okay, so you're, you're talking about credit for towards graduation? Correct. Um, that would be a great question for Kelly Schimmel. She is the fine arts coordinator for uh, Hamilton County Schools. I don't think she's able to make it today. Um, but uh, oh, I good. am happy to share her email address with you and you can uh, reach out and ask her um, uh, and she, she's got that information. So she works with all of our fine arts teachers in Hamilton okay. County um, and has a lot of great resources. Um, I, do, I would like to let you know that uh, while it's not for actual credit towards graduation, Arts Build does offer Tech Goes Home for the Arts. 
um, and our uh, version of that for our high school students happens every June. Uh, we spend five days, three hours a day with uh, high school students, so rising ninth graders through recent high school graduates. Um, they come and they put together a uh, portfolio uh, using a website guide that we have with Google Suite. Um, and so at the end of the five days, they have uh, their own professional art portfolio and they get to take a brand new laptop home with them to use for what they need. Um, and they also get feedback from local college professors. So uh, that's a great opportunity. It's usually the, the week in June right after Memorial Day. Um, so just stay tuned for that. And that's uh, a really good segue into uh, making sure everybody here receives ArtsWire, which is uh, Arts Build's weekly newsletter that drops in your email inbox every Thursday. Uh, we post information about uh, open positions in the arts community, as well as grant opportunities um, and different programming that uh, we're associated with. So if you don't already get Artswire, please go to artsbuild.com and there's a little pop-up that happens as soon as you go to our website and you can sign in for that. Um, another thing uh, that we really appreciate at Artsbuild um, about WTCI is uh, when we were in the dregs of the pandemic, uh, we couldn't have field trips and so Artsbuild filmed all of our Imagine opportunities and we worked with WTCI to stream that uh, on everybody's television. So everybody in the Hamilton County region had access to uh, our field trip opportunities uh, that are typically just for kindergarten through fifth graders in Hamilton County schools. So um, if it's a rainy day or you need to occupy a kiddo on the weekend and want some educational content, you can always go to Artsfield's YouTube page and access Imagine. Um, and I think every once in a while it gets streamed on WTCI. So we really appreciate that. Um, so next up, we have Andrea Zopo, who is a uh, local uh, teaching artist here in Chattanooga, and we are so lucky to have her. In fact, um, I believe she and uh, WTCI have a project. Are we are we able to talk about that yet, Robin? Robin and Andrea. Yes, I would love to introduce um, Miss Ladybug, who is so awesome and is also working with us to create a series that will be filmed around Chattanooga in various locations, um, where we will introduce students to um, some really cool ideas about gardening and engaging with nature. And so as she speaks on that, if you have a location that you would love to offer as a filming spot for that, please hit us up. That would be um, really cool. And I will introduce my friend, Ladybug. Yay! Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much, Amy and Artsfield and everyone joining us today. May I share my screen? All right. I kind of made just a, a presentation because I do a lot of different things. And sometimes I got to show off with some pictures because I definitely like looking at pictures. Um, so my name is Andrea Zopo, and I am Miss Ladybug. And I started being Miss Ladybug in about 2008 or so, um, teaching in environmental centers. Um, my background is I grew up in sort of a circus atmosphere. My mom was a professional clown. And growing up in that atmosphere, you know, um, I always, we were always doing fun things, going to hospitals too, going to nursing homes, going to schools as a young child. And I would be like the clown assistant. Um, I grew up in the arts and I got my degree in sculpture. And then I fell in love with the sculpture of gardening and, and working with the outdoors and creating creative artful spaces with nature. Um, I get to go to schools and do lots of fun things. And I also do a lot of fun things in the community. And so I'm going to share some pictures. Um, so I believe when we have fun, we remember. And so um, I blend the sort of play-based education approach with everything I do. And in 2018, I was awarded the PBS Early Learning Champion Award. 
Thank you. Uh, innovative play. Um, I was the only one to receive that that award that year. Um, the award went out to just 17 in the whole country. And so um, I still get to work with PBS and PBS is a great resource. And I get to do some consulting on professional development for teachers. Um, as you can see here, I focus on play-based and nature-based community arts, activating public spaces, environmental storytelling, experiential learning, and farm to school, which is a love of mine. Um, here in Chattanooga, I get to work with local artists, playful evolving monsters. I've um, also done some fun things with Art 120, which you'll see ahead of us. So it's so cool to be a part of the growing arts and um, growing arts community here in Chattanooga. Um, here's some friends. And we, we received a generous grant from Arts Build last year as a collective of artists to elevate stories of biodiversity in the Tennessee River Basin. And so we got to make these giant puppets. <sighs> and we got to tell stories. And this was at Riverfront Nights. Um, last year and we just we had a, a puppet show before the concert started and it was super fun to engage these spaces with giant puppets. Um, this over here is at Crabtree Farms and seeing Melissa here makes me so happy because we got to bring some puppets there and do storytelling and um, here is Mama Muscle in the Signal Mountain Parade telling stories about you know the biodiversity of the Tennessee River and how there's more small mussels in the Tennessee River than anywhere else in the Tennessee River Basin than anywhere else in the world. Wow, we're so special here. Um, here we're at the Chattanooga Theater Center for a 4th of July parade and at Main X24 for their parade. So it's just been so much fun showing off these puppets and thanks to Arts Build for helping us make it happen. Um, we made a giant sun for a solar powered festival um, at Camp Jordan. And then um, here we are here, here we are telling stories about the um, Appalachia and the biodiversity here. This was at the Atlanta Botanical Gardens. Um, I've taken, we've taken the puppets to different spaces here we are in Atlanta at Atlantic Station, and we did a special Earth Day presentation. And you can see the solar panels behind the giant sun puppet. I'm going to see if I can talk faster than Robin. I'll put you, oh, here we go. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> Um, this was so wonderful to partner with River City, and we did a community puppet show for the spring equinox this year. Um, it was fantastic. We did also the light up um, chat um, lanterns. And here we are um, on the right. We're here with Art 120's event. Um, and we have a Gulf Fritillary, a giant Gulf Fritillary on stilts. And if you don't know, a Gulf Fritillary is a butterfly and its host plant is the Tennessee State Wildflower, which is the passion flower. So it's making those connections with art and nature and our environment right here. Um, I've been doing shows a while. Like I said, my mom was a professional clown. And so, you know, getting into it and telling stories um, with clowning in nature has been just a joy for me. Um, here we are. This was the, our first ever light up chat lantern parade here in Chattanooga. And I got to te teach workshops shops all over thanks to Arts Build and um, other organizations. Um, and here we are, I get to work with Art 120 and we made these wonderful lantern hats. Um, and we got to do workshops at the Chattery and at schools and it was so much fun. Oh, and here, here's some more hats and of course, playful evolving monsters, Lumanuga. Um, so primarily my work is with schools and educators and I've been so blessed to get to be invited to so many different and diverse communities um, all around Georgia and now in Tennessee. Um, we, we, we act out what we want to do with play and puppets and song and movement. And here we are teaching how to stay on the path. This is also at the Atlanta Botanical Gardens. Um, this is in the Decatur area and um, that's where I'm from and I get to do fun things there a lot. And so we were talking about um, reducing your carbon footprint. So we have this giant shoe and um, we have a lot of fun with that. Um, this was just this summer, um, getting to do programs at the Botanical Gardens, and this was in Athens, Georgia. We made a giant puppet in just a few days with students, and um, this was the elemental foxes, 
and they have they were exploring the different elements in nature with this giant puppet we made out of found materials. Um, and then recently I've been doing um, programs with a book I um, just recently published. It's called Storm Bugs and this was at Emory University and we're doing um, a workshop and we acted out the book and we filmed it and it became a part of the um, Children's Film Festival, um, which I was a part of because I'll show you I have a film that's traveling the country right now. Um, and then I also get invited to do Earth Day activities and then on the bottom, this is a public children's garden in Atlanta that um, I steward with local families. Um, this summer also with the book, um, I've been doing more programming with Georgia Public Broadcasting and I have, um, we'll be doing some live shows about pollinators as well with Georgia Public Broadcasting and member station WTCI. So that's two PBS member stations excited. And um, most of the work that I love doing is thinking about and working with staff at schools and finding programming that we can do together um, that works with the school. And so I bring in the arts and nature and here we made a warp weighted loom and children can use it and activate the space. And there's just different ways to, to share and teach nature and art together but my love is growing food and also food access as well and celebrating culture and food. And I believe that any school and any community can have a, a garden or farm to school education program, even if you don't have an outdoor space, just celebrating, you know, growing sprouts and, do, you know, eating them and, and sharing in that. And you can just see the joy on their faces that they grew that. Um, and getting to go into different environments. I, I love celebrating the seasons and setting up playful education um, components. And, and so we come in here and we do song and music and dance and we grow food together and we make art. And um, just getting to go into different communities and helping the, the school and consulting the school with setting up the spaces and like what tools we need and what would work best for their um, maintenance plan. And I just am so blessed to get to be in these moments where you can just see the connection. Um, you know, doing, um, working with ages as, as young as two, um, before the pandemic, I was actually doing nature immersion with infants, nature immersion in art and getting um, infants to feel the textures of nature. And I was so surprised how far that went. It was so beautiful. And as you can see, you know, the love and the care that the children are holding these baby plants and they feel that connection with something that they grew and then they get to take care of learning responsibility. And um, getting to getting like I said, getting to be in these different environments and helping set up these spaces. Of course, you know, the magic happens when it becomes a part of them and they they open up their eyes and their minds and their palates to tasting different foods that they grew. And they, they say, who grew that? Who grew that? And they go, I grew that. Who grew that? I grew that. And um, so this has been really exciting. Um, I've been working with different communities on tea time and making products and sort of the craft and co cottage entrepreneur energy, um, designing logos, designing product labels and so forth. And so there's a lot of art integration that can, ha can happen with entrepreneurship. Um, during the pandemic, I was blessed to get to work with um, shelters in, in Atlanta and do tea time on the porches of shelters with um, women and children and making tea and sharing our thoughts and feelings. And um, I'll be, I'm working now at the YMCA in Chattanooga at a local teen addiction center. And we're gonna be modeling, making products and entrepreneurship and growing food in the garden. And that's a really fun project. I'd love to talk more about at another time. Um, but getting to have those reflection moments you know, where you make, you make and you create and you taste and you explore and reflecting and we don't get enough of that. So I'm so I'm glad I get to reflect here with y'all. Um, blending the arts and the storytelling and the growing food is my favorite thing. Um, 
we we create some fun puppets. And here we're talking about where the first scarecrow was found, and that was in Egypt. And we're talking about Africa and Egypt and arts. And we're talking about garlic because it's also grown at that time in Egypt and today. And so we grow garlic, we make we make scarecrows, we make art, we tell stories, and we do it in October. And it connects all these different threads of, of understanding. So then it becomes a part of you. Um, and I love sharing about biodiversity and diversity within our own cultures. And so here, you know, like, like we have different colors, so do plants have different colors. Like we have different shapes and sizes, so do plants that are similar have different shapes and sizes. I just remember how excited they were that this corn had red hair. It was just such a big deal. <laughs> And also, um, this was at Camp Jordan. I love setting up at, at parks and just engaging spaces with nature crafts. And here we're making a flower crown that you can make quickly with any age. And like I said, I just published my first book and I'm so excited about it. And we're creating puppet shows around the book. And I'm really excited about talking about climate and weather and creating shows about climate and weather because that's very important to talk about with young people and big people. And here's some new projects. This is a giant moon I just painted. My neighbor helped make it and we're gonna be debuting it on the, um, the next Equinox. And so I'm excited about that, but getting to make storytelling opportunities for other artists, working with them, um, creating shows and um, also partnering with different organizations. And here's some, I'm gonna be at East Lake Park on September 3rd, sharing my book. Um, thank you, LO Library. They just purchased purchased a hundred storm book, bug, bug books to give out to the public for free. So that's super exciting. And also at the top here, it says Smile Little Ladybug and you can visit smilelittleladybug.com. There is a film um, traveling at film festivals and it's about my family and performance and art and surviving the Holocaust. And so it says smilelittleladybug.com and it's it's super sweet. And um, I'm just so blessed to have our story shared in this beautiful art and format. And I hope that you can find me. Um, on a side note, I also do face painting on the side here. Um, and that's what our friends over at the flower shop at Jolie Jarden. And I do workshops with them as well. And I love to find me online. I love to talk. Um, here are also some PBS resources I created that are those blogs for teachers to get your classroom outside and activated in fun ways. And there's some art there too. Um, so thank you so much for sharing. And I'd love to hear if you have any questions as well. I have a question. Yay. Since we work so closely with uh, teachers here uh, at Arts Build, how can, uh, do, you, do you come into schools uh, like our friends at Art 120 do? Um, and what's the best way for a teacher to reach out to you to have you visit the class or maybe have a field trip that you accompany them on? Oh, thank you. Yes, you can email me. You can go to my website. I'm on Instagram. I'm follow ladybug on Instagram. Um, my website's followladybug.com. And then I'm Andrea at followladybug.com is my email. And I do come to schools kind of like in school field trips and do special programming. Um, in, um, in the schools that I worked with before I moved here officially, I worked with 20 over 20 schools a year in six schools, the same six schools every week. And I was working with over a thousand students a week. Um, I also had a team of educators and we provided a variety of programming um, from music to art to um, nutrition. Um, I have a certification in teaching food and nutrition and nature-based education. And um, I'm, I'm starting a certification to be a, an official environmental educator through the um, Environmental Arts Alliance um, this fall. So um, I do come into schools. I love doing seasonal education. And I love working with the school and the cultures and what they, they're they looking for and how we can blend and create a holistic program that works with what, they, what, what they're looking for and also bringing in the nature education and the seasonal education. Because I feel like if you're connected to your environment, 
you kind of have a sense of empowerment of who you are. And so knowing, you know, the plants and the trees around you is just so important to knowing even who we are. If we know where we are, we know who we are. Hi, I had a, a question. That's fine. Thank you. Hi. Um, hi, how are you doing, Andrea? Um, and this question is actually uh, presented in the chat as well by Gail Roberts. Um, and she asked us, uh, do you go outside of, of the South? And you had a list of um, places uh, where your programs are for uh, Ladybug. And um, I believe it was uh, for your bookstore bugs as well. Um, so to expand on Gail's question, are, if there aren't any um, uh, programs outside of the South, do you plan on having um, some uh, programs that go outside uh, of like the southern areas? Gosh, that's such a great question. Um, I did develop some some curriculum around Smile Little Ladybug for sixth grade and um, sort of bringing, you know, uh, the important issues of the Holocaust and arts and performances. And so that curriculum is tied to this film, which is traveling around the country. So there's that opportunity for, for that type of movement. And then before my um, work and performance recently, I was a part of a nonprofit and did some conferences and have presented at conferences around the country. But um, as far as Follow Ladybug, it's right now I'm pretty much in Georgia and a little bit in Tennessee, but I will be a key speaker at the Environmental Education Alliance Conference, which represents eight states. So um, hopefully um, that would be special. Um, but before doing this, this move here to Tennessee, I was so busy working with schools in Atlanta that I really didn't have time to branch out. And now that I'm working with local artists in Chattanooga, the idea of doing like educational tours, book tours and working with library systems is growing. And so I'm excited to work with local artists here and develop that programming because I do know a lot of artists that travel from library to library and rec center to rec center with educational programming. So I do think it's on the horizon. So thanks for that question. I think Corey, you can go ahead and jump in with your question. Hi, thank you so much. Oh, I think you're one of my new favorite people, most favorite assist people. Um, <laughs> thank you, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> just based on everything that you do is like, I don't know, it's just a, a breath of fresh air. A friend of mine, T and I, we have uh, created the Chattanooga Children's Business Fair. So I would, yeah, so um, I would just like to tell you to look out for my email because I definitely would love to invite the children that you work with, especially the ones that um, are making teas or making products or making anything um, that they would like to bring to the Chattanooga Children's Business Fair. And, you know, we have a um, a little workshop beforehand to teach them how to talk to people and say hi and, um, you know, just kind of give them that little entrepreneur spirit about whatever it is that they are creating. And when I tell you, I think the first, um, I'm not sure who's on here from uh, the farm, but they were the first place that we uh, did the fair and we had about 15 entrepreneurs. Well, the last year that we did it before COVID, we had uh 30 entrepreneurs and now we have a waiting list and of because we're going to do it again in november and so now we have a list of almost 55 entrepreneurs so we have outgrown every building we have gone to which is absolutely amazing but would just like to grow i mean to be honest with you i would like to be in the convention center just all you know children entrepreneurs so um you know, I, I, I'm excited about what it is that you're doing, and I'm excited to email you and just make sure that you have that information. So oh, that Corey, can... we have so much to talk about, because yeah, I, so... I started a, a affair, like, similar in Atlanta, and it grew, and it, it went to the different farmers markets, and it became awesome. kind of a part of the farmers markets. That's so awesome. wonderful. I can't wait to connect. 
Awesome. And I would like to tell you the whole thing about um, knowing what's in your yard. My son refused to cut our grass. And I was like, dude, cut the lawn. <laughs> And he refused to cut it. And I was like, okay, what is going on? So he said, no, I want to know what this stuff is. My daughter and I got COVID on like a Monday. We, she tested positive. I never took a test. I just figured that's what it was. He walked around our whole yard filming like everything that was in our yard. Went and researched it. Found out that everything in my yard is medicinal. And... He made this tea, I kid you not, on Thursday, he made this tea that he would not let our cups get half full. He would like pour tea back in it. He, he washed it, dried it, made us drink this tea. By Thursday, we were fine. Like no issues, no symptoms, no nothing. So know what's in your yard is my point. <laughs> I, maybe maybe he wants to join us on a, on a WTCI like herb ramble. We could do a plant no. ramble, a plant yeah, ramble. I, yeah, I said I was gonna make a whole documentary because I think it's a conspiracy because they keep make trying to make me cut my yard. They they <laughs> send me letters. I'm like it's a conspiracy. You guys don't want me to know what's in my yard. So I thought oh, yeah. I was gonna make a whole five minute movie about the cutting my lawn conspiracy. Because they oh, don't want yeah. me to know all the medicines in my yard. <laughs> oh yeah, and the cameras for you. Yeah, <laughs> let's 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 ask ask him if he wants to go even to the next level and and share that education with other young people because oh, I think it's so inspiring. He would absolutely love to. He he um grew some tomatoes and some bell peppers and something else oh some some other kind of jalapeno peppers that was hotter than the hot 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 i couldn't even mm -hmm. use them they were so hot but mm -hmm. the beam from our little seven tomatoes that we grew you would have thought i grew a whole garden i had seven <laughs> little tomatoes but i was so proud of those little tomatoes and that was the best salad ever so <laughs> Well, thank you, Corey. I, I know uh, I love seeing these connections being made here. So, um, and uh, I hope that you will be in touch with Andrea. And I know Melissa um, uh, has some experience with the Children's Business Fair. And so uh, I'm, I'm actually very interested in that and would love to know more. So I'll be emailing you, Corey. Um, so uh, just for the sake of time, want to um, keep some things moving and uh, we have uh, Miss Ann Treadwell who is here with the Jewish Federation of Greater Chattanooga. So uh, some more coincidences since Andrea has her own short film about the Holocaust. Um, Miss Ann is here to talk to us about the Jewish Federation's film series, which I am a huge fan of. Um, so Miss Ann, I will hand you the floor uh, to tell us about what's going on this year. Well, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start with some background information. Most people don't realize that the Jewish community in Chattanooga is only about 1600 people, making us one of the smallest um, cultural communities in Chattanooga. And through the help of Ruth Holmberg during the civil rights movement, um, fam Jewish families were allowed to um, live any place in Chattanooga that they wanted to. Prior to that, that wasn't the case in Chattanooga. Also, you may not know that one of the synagogues in the late 1970s was bombed and destroyed in Chattanooga. And as a result of everything that happened, one of the things that the Federation did was leave a traditional Jewish cultural center, like um, a recreational center and become a Jewish cultural center. And in the cultural center, we have the film festival. We do lots of um, programming. We have an exhibition series. We do all sorts of things. The um, Jewish film series is open to everyone, regardless of religious affiliation. Um, the Jewish Federation is a cultural and social service institution, not a religious institution. So there's no rabbi here or anything like that. But what we do is really focus on anti-hate and anti-Semitism, regardless of religious 
affiliation or ethnic. Um, one of the things you may not know is that we have a cultural emissary from Israel, a young person in their 20s that comes and stays for two years at a time. Our current, they're called Shliha, um, will be here next week. She's an Ethiopian Jewish woman, and her uncle was instrumental in helping Jews at risk of losing their lives in Ethiopia um, out of Ethiopia and they walked to Israel. So her story is really interesting. She also, for the people interested in preschool and in regular school things, she's available to go to any preschool um, and has been trained in any school, um, any religious institution. Um, she's just a great, wonderful person. But kind of back to the film series, the film series kicks off on Monday, and there's a mix of films from all over the world. Um, probably one of the films that's the most interesting is called The Levi's of Monticello. And I bet most of you didn't realize that after Thomas Jefferson left Monticello, it fell into ruins, um, complete with enslaved people living at the house. And two Jewish families bought the property and really worked to free the enslaved people. And the film is about that story. Um, many of the films in the Jewish film series um, talk about, although they may have a Jewish tint, they also talk about really important cultural dialogue things. You can find out all about the film series and see all the trailers to the film by going to www.jewishchattanooga.com. Um, you can see the films either virtually or in person. And on the website, it'll give you all the details for that. But one of the, and it's in its 15th year. So we've been, we are the longest lasting um, international film series in Chattanooga. Um, some of the films will be subtitled, so don't let that stop you. The other thing that we have available is an exhibit called Photo is Voice. And it's a really interesting exhibit because um, young Arab Israeli teenage girls, and most people don't know that you can be Arab in Israel um, and not Palestinian, and you can be represented in the government if you're Arab in Israel. And these teenage girls worked with um, photographers to create an exhibit that is available for free in schools and churches and community centers. And it helps not only teenage women talk about their trials, um, but also to, is a vehicle for us to talk about um, gender issues. So that exhibit is available for free to anyone. And if that's not enough, we have a new exhibit that opened on Monday called Out of Darkness into Light. About two thirds of the exhibit showcases Chattanooga visual artists um, in our new space. There are about 70 pieces out of more than 200 that um, we curated from. And our gallery hours are from nine to 4.30, Monday through Friday. And you're more than welcome to even call or stop by and see the exhibit. If, it, if you have not been in our building or don't know where the Jewish Cultural Center is, um, we're on North Terrace right after the I-75-24 split. And I would have shown you lots of visuals, but I really made the choice that I want you to come visit. You know, we're, we're very relationship-based and encourage people working with us. So again, our uh, website is jewishchattanooga.com. Um, as I said, we are not a religious institution. We are a cultural and social service institution. And we have research that sources for teachers. We have a preschool on campus here um, for two through five years old that is um, multicultural, multilingual. There are four languages spoken in the back currently. Um, so it's a great place to visit. Come see me. 
Thank you, Miss Ann. And I put all of your information in the chat. I put a link to the film series as well as uh, your you. email address for folks who are going to reach out. Um, I can't wait to see all of this. And um, but do we have any questions for for Miss Ann? Oh, Audrey, you got a question? <laughs> hey. Um... So I, I'm wondering, I feel like, you know, Chattanooga is such a draw for like tourists. And, um, and I feel like it might even like specifically, I feel like there's some threads of draw for, for also Jewish tourists. Mm -hmm. and, okay, so that, and, and I, and I know there's more history around that. And I need to come to the center and find out more because I know that my grandparents, my grandfather, who is a Holocaust survivor, honeymooned in Chattanooga. And so like, to me, that was interesting, like the choice to honeymoon in Chattanooga. And then also- My like, grandparents honeymooned here too. Okay, so there's something going on with that. Obviously it's like a, and then I've heard that from other Jewish folks in the Atlanta community about like Chattanooga and coming here in a certain time period. Like there must've been something going on. Just, I don't know, like Chattanooga was like the place to go. <laughs> well, and you and I have many stories to share. When I was a visiting artist in Ohio, um, I made a Japanese garden and got arrested for witchcraft. So we, we can talk. <laughs> My background is as a sculptor too. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, I'll come visit. I need to get there. <laughs> yes, you do. Well, thank you. Excuse Any other? Oh. I have a, yeah, I have a question. I'm sorry. No, jump on in. Hi, this is Juana Roberts from Barger Academy, and this question is for Anne. Um, I know at one time the Hamilton County Schools used to offer a program called Facing History and Ourselves. Yes. And we used to meet at times there at the mm -hmm. Jewish Federation, and I was wondering, is that program still going on, or has it gone by the wayside? Well, the program is still going on nationally. Unfortunately, it costs money. And the donor group that was able to donate for that, because it's an expensive program, um, suggested strongly to the schools that they start picking up the tab or find donors, and that has not happened. Ha having said that, um, there is a Holocaust related dance program that we're working on bringing in in May. Um, and we have lots of Holocaust related resources here at the Federation for all age levels. And, you know, Barger's around the corner. Right, um, right. <laughs> we have done several, not, not since before COVID, but after COVID, before COVID, we did lots of volunteer work over, you know, over at Barger, and hopefully we can do more. Okay, thank you. Amy? Yes, Bob. How are you? I'm doing very well. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, and it's wonderful to hear all the things that are going on in our community. You guys are doing great work. I work with Robin uh, at WTCI, and I just uh, wanted to say, Robin, thank you for your presentation. But listen to what Ian's talking about. I want you to all to be aware of a new program that's coming out on September 18th, 19th, and 20th. It's the U.S. and the Holocaust. It is a three-part series that Ken Burns is putting on together. Uh, I know Robin is working with some of you to really highlight this and to look at the educational material that comes with this. Uh, you'll see more information about the U.S. and the Holocaust uh, coming up uh, from WTCI in the near future. Uh, September uh, 17th is going to be here before we know it. And it starts on the 18th, 19th, and 20th. So, so you should you should also know at the Chattanooga Library, the National Touring Exhibit, Americans in the Holocaust, um, opens January 26th and runs through the entire month of February. Um, we're working with the Tennessee Holocaust Commission, and we'll be bringing in an exhibition called The Perpetrators to show people how things like the Holocaust happen mm -hmm. and what kind of uh, verbal words and actions happened 
prior to the Holocaust. And we have several speakers coming in during that time too. So that we're working complementary with the February programming. Very good. And you know, maybe we can promote some of that around the broadcast too. So I just want to That'd make sure and uh, it's been a pleasure to uh, be a witness of this group today. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. And can I just mention really quickly that I learned from Ken Burns himself that he was inspired to create that film by viewing the exhibition that is traveling to Chattanooga. So yes, just wanted that's to say great. That. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody. For it. This has been a very fulfilling community meeting. Um, and I, I thank all of you. And um, I just love how it's all come full circle. Uh, with the work that everybody who presented today is doing. And I'm just so grateful to have, a, to be in a community <laughs> like this. Um, and so uh, I, we've got about five minutes left. And so I know we've got some folks on here who are part of other arts and culture organizations. And so I wanted to give you all an opportunity to make any quick announcements. Thanks, Amy. This is Linda LeVan at SOLET. We have a great program next Thursday, the Chattanooga Author Showcase. We have nine authors of different genres that are going to be at Stoveworks with their books. Uh, so it'll be a fun party with some music, some great art at Stoveworks, and a chance to be able to check out more about local authors and buy their books. And it's uh, it, it's got some recommendation because Robin Stringfellow and Amy are volunteering for me. Yay, thank you. <laughs> Oh, and it is free. So y'all come out at six o'clock the 25th. That's always good. Hi, all. This is Mackenzie with Creative Discovery Museum. Um, still a little new face around here, but um, we have our art space exhibit is opening um, completely newly renovated um, next Saturday, August 27th. It will officially be open. It includes lots of local artists installations. Um, it's going to be gorgeous. It is still in the last stages of installation stage at the moment. So it's a little stressful, but it's going to be great when it's all done. Um, so we'd love for you guys to all come out and see it um, and the rest of the upstairs exhibits that are coming back um, that are by popular demand. Um, so really excited about that and wanted this group to know about that as well. Thanks, Mackenzie. I just want to say a quick thing for uh, Charlie Newton's not here, but he's got a great event coming up on Saturday. A lot of us are going to be part of it from 10 to 3 down at Miller Park. So come see the Jingle Truck, come see Robin, and I know there's a lot of other folks in here that are going to be helping uh, support the arts and helping uh, with his programs. So uh, please join that and also mark your calendar for September 10th. That's Ella Library's event. I can't remember all the details off the top of my head, but please look for it, mark it, and, and come see us. We're going to do some fun community projects with them as well. And all of these announcements are proof as to why you need to subscribe to ArtsWire. <laughs> all right, any other announcements? Okay, well, I will wrap things up with my final announcements. I know that uh, we're going to have some teachers who are going to be viewing this after the fact. And um, if you all know my name, because you get lots of emails from me. Um, and so teachers, you received an email from me not too long ago about some workshop opportunities that we have coming up. Uh, we will be working with a Kennedy Center teaching artist on uh, the week of National Arts Appreciation Week. We will be at Barger Academy of Fine Arts working with Daniel Barash, who uh, is going to provide a workshop on shadow puppetry and using shadow puppetry in your classroom to help uh, drive home that core curriculum. So, uh, Andrea, I hope that you'll sign up for that because I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, additionally, uh, on October, uh, and pardon me, that's the week of September 11th. So we'll be at Barger on the uh, 13th and 15th 
in the evening from 4.30 to 7.30. And then on October 19th, we have a workshop for teachers and local educators, arts educators and artists at the Tennessee Aquarium. Uh, October 19th from 4.30 to 7.30, we'll be working with uh, the Aquarium's education team uh, at, in the final days of the Washed Ashore exhibit. So um, yeah, so lots of fun stuff coming up. And uh, just to let you, you guys know, our next community Zoom will be September 16th, 10.30 in the morning. We will uh, hear from Todd Shipley, who is the Director of Arts Education for the Tennessee Department of Education. So uh, this was just a sneak peek into the education world, the arts education world. So mark your calendars for that September 16th at 10.30 um, for our arts and culture organizations, we are ramping back up our shared services. So uh, our next shared services meeting will be in person on August the 31st at 1030 in the morning at Arts Build. Shawana Kendrick is uh, coming to us uh, with her company SK Consults, and she will be talking to us about setting realistic fundraising goals and achieving them. So with that, we are right at time. So thank you all for joining us today. Uh, subscribe to ArtsWire so you can get all of this information, but we really appreciate you spending time with us on this Friday. Everybody go have a great weekend. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. That was great. You guys have a great day. Thank you. You too. Yeah. Bye. Amy, I love that the next meeting is on Mexican and Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to kick off the month. Yeah. Uh.